<laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. First I want you to circle the word has or hath. The word has or hath is past tense which means that God has already supplied everything you would need to fulfill your purpose. But it's locked up in the heavenlies. It's on earth in the physical. But it is activated from the spiritual. Which means whatever you was born to do, all resources are already available. However, these resources do not move towards you until you start activating your purpose. In other words, if you don't begin to do what you were born to do, then what was provided for what you were born to do does not come to you. He's already provided everything you need for all that you need. He's already done it. The next verse tells you why. For he chose you in him before the foundation of the world. When did he choose you? Before the foundation of the world. So God didn't choose you lately. And you were not chosen when your mother and father went to bed. Matter of fact, your mother and father went to bed because you was chosen. <laughs> so don't get too uptight about your parents if they're alcoholics no problem just say thanks for getting me here let me get on with my purpose huh you might not know who your daddy is never knew stop worrying about your daddy he was used by God to get you here that's all You got work to do, young man. You got work to do, young woman. Stop regretting your past and start working on your future. He chose you long before your mama knew you. He chose you because he predestined you, verse 5, to be his son. Predestined means he set the destination before. He began the journey. He finished you before he began you. He completed everything before he started your life. That means you are not an experiment. You are an adventure. You know, people who discover their purpose in life, they love living. Oh, when they wake up in the morning, they can't wait for the sun to rise. When you know why you was born, you hate nights because you don't want to go to sleep. Because you can't wait to get up and get started again. If you are bored, it's because you don't know why you were born. Discover your destination and the journey will be fun. Even the potholes will be experienced on your way to your journey. You will never be discouraged with detours if you know your destination. You didn't hear what I said. Think about it. If you know where you're going and you plan to go a certain route and the road is blocked and they say go detour, you don't get mad and go back home. (laughs) Hello? You know where you're going. So you take the detour because you know your address. If you know where you're going, then any temporary mishap does not deter you to go back. He says, he predestined me. Pre means before, destination means the end. He set my end before I began. Therefore, you are not a mistake. You are not an experiment. God's not playing games with your life, sir. Madam, you were born and sent to this earth because there's a specific thing you're supposed to start that's already finished. (laughs) 
When you see your destination, it's called a vision. And every person in this room should have seen their vision. The problem is when you see the vision, it is so awesome that you say, mm -mm, that ain't me. And you know why you say that? Because you've been conditioned by your society and by your parents and by your family and by your community to not believe it's possible. That's why the thoughts about you are so awesome, David says, that if God was to show them to you, you'd believe it's impossible. Verse 11, in him. You have also been chosen, having been predestined according to what? The plan of the manufacturer who works out how many things? Everything to conform to what? His purpose. He has a purpose for your life and he works out everything to conform to his purpose. Everybody say everything. everything. Say it loud. Everything. Say it louder. Everything. How many things does he work out? Everything. everything. And he works it out to do what? To conform to his purpose for your life. That means whatever he gave you birth to do, no matter what mistakes you made, he'll work them in and make them a testimony. So no matter how many times you fail, the manufacturer never gets upset. He takes your drug addict problem and he says, that's all right. And he makes it conform to his purpose, puts you back in your purpose. And he says, we'll use it as a testimony. Yes, and you got pregnant or wedlock and you feel like your whole life is finished and you got to drop out of school and you can't go on and everything's all messed up and you feel like quitting and committing suicide and you want to kill the baby and God is saying, no baby, that's all right. That's all right. The baby is my property. Children are my heritage. Even though the situation wasn't right, the baby is right. He says, now I want you to come and bring the baby with you. I'm going to put you back in my purpose for your life. And I'm going to use the baby as a testimony so I can show people that I can make an illegitimate child a legal leader. That's what God does. Woo! That's what God does. He makes everything conform. Chapter 3, chapter 2 rather, verse 10. He goes on now, watch the manufacturing language. He says, for we are his workmanship. Manufacturing language. And we were what? Created to do good works. Which were prepared for you, how long? Before the earth began. The works that you were born to perform were already prepared long before you were conceived. Which means you were born to do something that's already finished that God wants you to start. So you came to this planet, not because the sperm slipped. I like that. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a slip. Tell your neighbor, I was chosen before the earth was made. Do you know that every time a man releases sperm, they scientifically proven that 500 million sperms are released every time a man releases sperm? At least 500 million. Could you imagine? And all 500 million of those sperms, all of them dash toward the egg. And they try to beat each other. And only one makes it. Guess who made it? That means there were 500 million of them and God was watching them. And God says, I want mm, that one. Guess who that was? Oh yeah, that was me. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Not a mistake. Not a mistake. Not a mistake. Tell your neighbor, Luther Van Dross says, one in a million. But he never met me before, you see. I am one in 500 million. Clap your hand if you understand how important you are.
Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends to be a blessing to them.